So the next um, module I'm going to build for the RC2014 Pro is the dual clock and reset module. Um, now, the clock module uh, isn't like a real-time clock module. It's the um, system clock, the heartbeat. So if you think about a Sinclair Spectrum running at three and a half megahertz, there's a crystal control clock in there. I think it's 14 megahertz and it's divided down twice to get the three and a half megahertz. So it's divided by two and then divided by two again. Uh, I think 14 and seven are used for the um, video circuit and then the three and a half is used for the Z80. And the idea behind the clock is every pulse of the clock, the Z80 will switch state um, simply put, it executes instructions every step of the clock. It's not that quite straightforward in a processor like the Z80, but for the sake of argument, that's how it works. Um, so yeah, here we go. This is the clock module, and there's space for logic. That's where the crystal's going there. Um, I think the logic may be used to divide the clock down because there's various frequencies here that can be selected uh, and discrete so there's diodes uh, caps and resistors space for reset button and lots of headers that we need to solder on uh, header pins here here and here it's slightly different from the z80 module that we um, soldered up earlier that i soldered up earlier if you notice the top row doesn't go along the full length of the right hand side of the card it's only using what one two three four five six uh seven eight nine ten pins so i've got to remove 16 pins on the left hand side here and i think it's 13 on the right hand side and i'm going to do exactly what i did before for the z80 module um it's 16 on the left 13 on the right so let me just get this orientator correctly it's going to be going in this way so it's 16 on this side 13 on on 16 there 13 there and <coughs> pardon me when i flip it round it'll be the opposite way round uh it will be uh 13 here and then 16 here if you notice the way it's slotted through by the way i don't think i made this clear in the last video um you leave you only put in the back row of pins you leave the front row of pins clear you can see there so you can pull them out um yeah so let's do that we're gonna say 13 pins there's 40 though isn't there let me get this right 16 uh, okay so it's 16 from the right hand side let's go to it get my needle nose pliers Let's just double check that. Perfect, look at that. There we go. Bobby Dazzler. Now I'm going to chop the end one off. Uh, so to do that, I will use my side cutters and just remove this last one. Hopefully, I can do it without breaking this. Mm. doesn't matter if we break it does it as long as I don't snap too many off just nibble away at it <laughs> I don't know where that was shot to hang on a second while I just find that okay that's been found flicked onto the floor uh, 
I'll just get rid of the plastic bits here. Like I said, I'm going to keep these pins. They always come in handy. Uh, they always come in handy. Uh, where am I going to put these then? One of these drawers will do. There we go. Get rid of the plastic on this one, it's annoying me. Whoop, there we go. Right, Let's tidy up my mess and I can get this one soldered. In fact, whilst I'm doing this, let's turn my soldering iron on, get the water temperature. There we go. Sure, there's an easy way to do this involving electromagnets. Uh, mm, I don't know why I keep these pins. I keep saying they'll come in handy sometime, but I rarely use them. Um, I'll probably accumulate a bucket full of them over the course of my life. There we go. Right, the soldering iron's up to temperature, which is good, because it means I can stop waffling about pins and actually get some soldering done. Let's put that out of the way. Right. Start through there. Excellent. Do what I did last time, just tack it in at the leftmost and rightmost extremes. Make sure it's level. Turn that up a bit. Clean my tip. Let's solder. One down, turn it around. Two. All right, let's see how level that is then. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe just do a little bit. Maybe bend it back a bit. That's the one. That is perfect. Almost perfect. Yeah, that'll do. Right, let's get the rest soldered up then. Um, switch to time-lapse. I'll catch you at the other end of this. Cool, there we have it. Not missed any. That's looking pretty good. Nice and level. 90 degree angle, more or less. Right, next, chip sockets. So I need five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 pin sockets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's get those out. 
one, two, three, four, five. And these are all mounted notch up um, on the board like so. Yes, they're all fa they're all fourteen pin, aren't they? Not miscounted. Let me just double check. Yeah, that's perfect. Right, let's get these in then. I'll do the usual. I'll uh, um, tack them in, top left, bottom right, and then solder them up afterwards. Um, yeah, let's go fast forward again. I'll see you at the other side of chip soldering, well, socket soldering, I should say. And there we have it, all of the sockets soldered in, nice and level. What's next? Okay, we've got some uh, headers and header pins to put in, uh, a switch, uh, right angled header pins there. There. Okay, so let's get the this in first for the external clock module. Do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, see if we can get this at a nice right angle. Do the usual. Tack it in the left and the right and uh, level it up by hand manually. One, two, <laughs> actually that's not bad at all, let's just straighten it up, make sure it's all the way in, <laughs> there you go, first time, hopefully the uh, back plane will be as easy to do as that. That's looking pretty smart. Push it down a little bit. There we go. That's more like it. It's level with the PCB markings now. Look a bit cockeyed before. Yes, it's all about the detail of stuff like this. You want it to look good, don't you? Right, let's get the rest of this soldered in then. I mean, it's going to be visible, it's not going to be in a case or anything, is it? So, one has to make sure that it looks the part. Nothing worse than a scruffy looking assembly. Oh, come on, soldering iron. What feed me? Oh, solder, there we go. Excellent. I've no idea what this external clock module does. I'll have to look into it. Um, I don't know if it's just a Probably just a board with a crystal on it looking at it. So you've got a space, probably a couple of caps. Reset switch. Don't know what that big square's for. 
look it up on the internet at some point. Right, what next? Okay. Um, there's a head of pins for this. There's one, two, three, four. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I reckon that's a forty. So if I do one, make sure I count this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Snip it there. Start creasing. Get away at it. Snap it. There we go. And uh, that needs to go there. Same again. Times three. So that's there. Just nibble away at the plastic a bit. I want to split it. Hey, where's that gone? Saved by the soldering iron. Is that a 10 again? Yeah. So that will go there. That will go there like so. And I guess this is... I'm just cut in half now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. That's probably about halfway, isn't it? It's, yeah, perfect. Whoop. Try again. Mm -hmm. Going to be like that, is it? Hold on to it tight this time so it doesn't go flinging everywhere. There we go. Perfect. Now these are going to take jumpers, so I think, just to make absolutely sure, I'm just going to put a jumper in either side, just to hold them close together, to help me solder them. Hopefully without melting the jumpers, now they're in this bag by the looks of it. A bag with all of the LEDs in. So let's just get a couple of these out. I'll need this for the crystal and the switch later anyway. You there. Right. More soldering, more pins. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of putting a jumper in just to make sure that they're correctly aligned. You go away, plastic. Like that. Could probably get away with just putting one in, but I'll put two in. That just holds all the pins in nicely. Let's get those out for a minute. And I can do what I normally do, which is solder opposing corners. And uh, yeah, see what that looks like. Get my fingers in the way of soldering here a minute, not in a bad way. Oh, that didn't work very well. Let's try that again. One down. Never let up a bit of thing now. That's in nice and snug and level now. And just do the other side. Mm, that should be good to go then. I 
49. Tin. Clean. Improvement. And job is a good one, I think. There you go. That's done the trick perfectly. There you go, top tip for you there. So I'll just solder a couple of more in. And then I'll remove those jumpers so they don't go lost or damaged. Um, yeah, I don't use water to clean my tip. I use one of those kind of like gold spongy things. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, there you go. I use one of those gold spongy things. That is more or less as dry as the day I bought this. Um, yeah, just don't see the benefit of putting water on a hot tip. as they say, will do the trick. So let's remove those and solder the rest up. I'll go to fast forward now when I do these headers. I'll see you at the other side. Totally carried away there and got cold for my tea, so I'm back again now. Right, um, I've dug out a few more things that I need to solder on. So there's a right angled header that goes here by the looks of it. Yep, there's a uh, straight header that's going to go in there, and there's a right angled switch which I think is that fella there. See where the pins are, going out at right angles to the button. And that is going to go in, yeah, he said, there we go. That looks right to me. So let's get these soldered in. Uh, start off with the switch first, that's the easiest. Right, soldering irons back up to temperature. Boost it a little bit. Give my tip a clean. And do it. Beep. There we go. Requires a little bit more solder than the uh, jumpers. The headers. That's good. that click at your switch do the right angle one now that might be a bit fiddly wait to find 
find out. Put it in. Is it going to stay in place if I hold it upside down? No. Right. So at this point, I use my friend Blue Tack. Blue Tack to the rescue. I'm going to pop that in there. Just literally grip it gently in about the right position. Voila. I can adjust it after I've tacked it in. Um, there are pins for this. It's there. there you go, tack it in place. Remove the blue tack. Is it level? That's pretty darn good. Let's just push it in a bit more. Perfect. And finish that off. Yeah, come on, solder. And there. That's that done. Uh, finally, this straight header, which is labelled reset. Put you in there. In fact, you're another candidate for blue tuck, aren't you? So I've soldered all of the sockets the headers and a button. Now it's time to start soldering some of the discretes. And I've already started by <clears throat> putting four of the resistors in place. Now these four resistors are all different values. From left to right we've got a 10k, uh, a 1k with a red band, uh, that's a 1m and the last one, which is all red, is a 2K2. And there are two more to go in in the corner here. Two more 2K2s. Um, now, if you're not quite sure um, how to um, determine a resistor's value according to its banding, there are plenty of calculators online where you can input the colours and it will give you the resistor value, or vice versa. But there's also another way you can do it if you've got access to a multimeter, which I'll show you now. So let me just get my multimeter. Uh, just bog standard, uh, cheapo digital multimeter I've got. I'll just plonk that there so you can see it. Um, just need to make sure that your probes are plugged into common and voltage your own. And on my uh, multimeter, this quadrant here is for measuring resistance. It's got the ohm symbol there. Um, so say for example I didn't know what resistance this was or I wanted to double check the resistance on it. Um, because it's a 2k resistor I have to select it here to the next level up. So 2k would probably just display a 1 because we're going out of range. So if I just touch my probes on either side of here it's not doing anything it's out of range so switch it to the next range up 20k with a bit of luck that should read about 2.2 which it is doing so you can see here it's quite easy to measure resistance or confirm resistance using a multimeter so if I just pop this the other way around um, let's just just double check the resistance on these so we said it was a 10k so i'm going to leave it on 20k that's about 10k next one's a 1k so i can switch it to the 2k range it's good enough for me uh what did i say next one was 1m so i'll select 2m here Again, pretty good, and 2K2, so that's the same as these resistors here, so 20K. 
and just double tap the pins on either side of the legs part of the side of the resistor I'm getting about 2.2 so that's fine I'm pretty confident we've got those resistors right so I can turn my multimeter off and put that away and we can start soldering I'll probably cut to the fast forward on this. Uh, another tip is when you're forming resistors, I mean I showed you in the, one of the early videos, I've got a kind of a plastic component forming tool. Uh, you can hand form them, sometimes it looks a bit scruffy. Um, you can actually use some good old trusty needle nose pliers just to get a nice 90 degree bend really close to the component. It's quite tight fits uh, on the board here. Um, not a lot of margin for error. So you just start it off and then just bend it round. There we go. That's a 2K2, so you can go in there. Oh. Pull it through. Ah. <laughs> Come on. You can get level. That'll do. Uh, and one more. Perfect. And there we go. Pull that through. Bend the component legs on the rear. That's good to solder. So I will see you after this fast forward. There we go, nearly done. Just got the capacitors and the crystals to go in now. Oh, and a die. Let's not forget the diode. Uh, it's been a day or so since I've looked at this and there's not much more to actually do on this board to get it up and running. There's a handful of discrete components and uh, the chips need putting in the sockets. Um, it's mostly capacitors um, and a crystal and a diode. Um, so I've counted the components out. There's the crystal which will go uh, in here like so. Um, there are a couple of 22 pico farad capacitors which are marked 22J uh, in the absence of any other numbers. I assume 22 means 22 picofarads and a J, if memory serves, is 5% uh, tolerance. Um, the only two components which are polarized, that is, you need to put them in the right direction, otherwise it ain't gonna work, are these two electrolytic capacitors. Thankfully, I don't know if you can see it there, the board is marked where the two capacitors go there, just to the right of my finger. Um, positive is towards the resistors, and negative is handily marked 
with a big fat white um, mark, circle, half circle, hemisphere. Is that right? Should know that. Um, and as are the capacitors, so with an electrolytic capacitor, um, you normally get the negative pin marked with a stripe. I mean, on helpfully this one, the stripe's not terribly well aligned with the um, legs. This one any better? Yeah, that one's better. So the longer legs are usually positive anyway. Um, if the legs haven't been cut, a uh, shorter leg is negative. Um, and then we've got the diode, which is a 1N4148. Incredibly difficult um, to read the markings on these. <clears throat> My eyesight's obviously not where it used to be, however, that diodes are shrinking. Possibly a combination of the two. Um, I had to use my headset, which I'll just pitch now, and a magnifying glass in order to just double check this was a 4148. But it is indeed. Oh, sorry. This is also um, polarized. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you've got um, the black stripe there to the right of the diode. So. Uh, Diode will only let current flow in one direction. Um, well, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but in essence, uh, going from the anode, which is this side, to the cathode, which is this side. So the cathode's marked by the stripe. Um, just get a bit of scrap paper here. Uh, so if you imagine, move that out of the way a second, that you've got your diode here and the stripes there which is pretty much what I've got the way I remember this is the schematic of a diode uh, usually looks a bit like that so this is the stripe simple as that and in the schematic that's an arrow that points in the direction of flow there we go, diode 101 there. Simple way of remembering your diodes. Right, let's get the soldering iron switch done. Get some soldering done. Ooh. Let that warm up a second. I'll just take a swig of coffee. It's been quite a joy um, building this board so far. I think I rated it a 4 out of 10 on Twitter with regards to... Mm ease of um, build I mean it's largely helped by the modular nature of it because you can attack it in kind of smaller bite sized chunks I'd probably increase that complexity to up it to about five partly because um, well the Harlequin I built I gave an eight simply because it was quite a dense board with lots of components to solder um, in uh, on one board um, but Ben at Byte Delight had packaged everything up so it was pretty much a assembled by numbers. This it's involved a little bit of toing and froing the RC2014 website. Um, and you need a little bit of knowledge of components, but all of the information's online either on the RC2014 website, uh, and you can look up the component values. And each board's got a bill of materials and a photograph, so you're not going to go far wrong. You're not going to go far wrong. A rudimentary understanding of electronics and perhaps a guide like this one might help you assemble one with little to no problems. Ah, the soldering iron is now up to temperature. So let's get started. Um, I'll put the crystal in first, I think. Let's have a look at that fellow. This doesn't have a polarity. Crystal oscillator, in you go. And the legs slightly. So hold it in place. There we go. Oh, the solder iron's not been used for a couple of days, so I'll just tin it. 
clean it. Normally gets a lot of use this soldering iron. There we go. It's always worthwhile before you put your soldering away, iron away to tin it to prevent oxidization of the tip. Um, for the sake of the Hapney's worth of solder, um, it's well worth doing. I mean, look, you know, the tip's nice and clean there still. It's not the newest soldering I've had it here. How many years have I had this now? A couple of years. A couple of years now. Blimey, time flies. Right, let's see if this is at the right temperature now. A little bit of solder on the tip. A little bit too much solder there. Just to help conduct heat from the tip to the... Uh, Perfect, there we go. Fantastic. That's in place. Good, good, good. And to either side of the um, oscillator are 22 picofarad capacitors, which are these fellas here, to double check. Yep. So let's get these out of the packaging. Do, do, do. <sighs> the clock circuit will probably be quite easy to test. I can test that on its own once we've got the back plane um, fitted because it's not reliant upon any other boards apart from the back plane to give it power and we should get a clock signal out of it. So when I come to testing this, I'll uh, probably do that. That's all right. All right, let's mount these to the... Uh, Symbols are visible, so I can always handy to check later. It's not really a problem with this board, actually, because the uh, the board is well marked up with regards to component values. That's that in. Um, there we go. And the legs at the back. <sighs> so I think for a, I'm not an expert on timers, um, timer circuits, uh, not in the slightest, but usually for um, an oscillator circuit, you need a crystal and a capacitor or a couple of capacitors and um, probably a resistor as well. Um, there's some classic timer circuits you can look at on the internet i've got one in the bsx i don't even pretend to understand it it's like voodoo um there are some very good explanations on the internet um still don't understand them other than the fact that they work some of the beauties of electronics, you don't necessarily need to understand everything, you know. It's uh, quite modular in many ways, a bit like programming. You can um, have a basic under understanding and uh, build electronic boards out of modules you've found off the internet 
kind of link them together like Lego, especially so with digital electronics. That was very Lego like, very very much like programming in fact. Chips have an input and they have an output, and you link them together to make them do what you want to do. Uh, yeah, that's looking okay. So what have we got left now? We've got the diode. Um, the capacitors. Let's get that diode in first. Bend the legs. And the board on this, rather conveniently, has a fixed stripe. Um, so I'm assuming where the stripe is there at the bottom, that's where the uh, stripe of the diode goes. Look at that. Perfect Mundo. It's all about confidence electronics, which kind of. There we go, get that soldered up now. Uh, yep. Yeah. Just double check. Good, good, good. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Soldering, once you've got the knack of it, is incredibly relaxing. I don't know if it's the nature of it or the lead fumes, but... <laughs> Joking aside, always do soldering in a well-ventilated room. Especially if you're using leaded solder like I am. Or oh, you'll be going mad. Well, that's looking pretty tidy, that. Um, so, what have we got left now? Four, six components. I'm assuming um, C6, C8, C7 and C5 are all the 100 uh, nanofarad um, decoupling capacitors. There seems to be one for each pair of chips here, one for the clock module, and one for this chip here. Uh, so let's get all those in now. One. You will go in. What's going on here? <laughs> the holes are all big enough. Let's try it Bit of squeeze, feel like, like that. There you go. Legs are just a bit bent. So that's the one one oh four. Bend the legs. Another one oh four. And bendy and the legsy. Third one oh four. In we go. And the last one oh four. You will go in. Bent, isn't it? Straighten you up a bit. There we go. Maybe I should have soldered those in before the connector. Might have been a bit easier to solder all those in, then put the connect connectors in last. Still, we live and learn, and it's all fine, all hunky dory. Let's get these soldered in now. Bit 
the flow of that one again a bit better, I think. Try again. Oh, it'll do and snip the excess sword off there. It's not a problem. Coupling caps hats are kind of a tiny reservoir of power. The idea is they filter out any uh, irregularities on the power supply to ensure the chips get a nice smooth. Just decouples it. It's like um, if you've got like a, I don't know. Stay at that. Let's trim that off a bit better. There we go. If you've got a tap that's running rough, that's like your power supply. So, you know, the flow might not be even. If that's flowing into a tank, which is your capacitor, um, and then you've got a pipe coming out from the tank, the tank flow coming out the flow coming out of the tank is, is smooth so that's essentially what a capacitor's done i mean it's a little bit more complicated than that electronics often is but it's a good analogy i like it uh, there we go that joint's not the best i'm going to reflow that one i think there we go Just reflow that one. Perfect. Never be afraid to go back to a joint that looks a bit iffy. Um, excellent. Happy with that. Oh, I've got to clip this one. Cool, and that just leaves us with the, the electrolytics, which thankfully are usually clearly marked. Um, yeah, let's have a look. So we've got a 47 microfarad. Or UF there. Um, that should be 22. 22 microfarad. Uh, okay. So the 22 goes on the right hand side. Remembering to put the stripe where the uh, white is painted on the circuit board. And the longer leads the positive one. That goes towards the resistor end. It's marked on the board positive. You can't get it wrong. And again. Long lead is positive. You go in. There we go. There. Excellent job. Let's get these soldered in now. Let's put the board up on there. And... Get 
get the soldering out of it to clean. Top tip, clean your tip. <laughs> there we go. One. Two. A lot of thought has gone into these boards. A lot of thought. Make sure they're straight. Got to look the part. It's going to be a naked assembly. There's no cases going on. So, you want it all to, you know, not look wonky. That'd be a bit of a, it'd annoy me. It's such a nice board, just to spoil it with my shoddy assembly. Just wouldn't be right. Okie doke. I think that's all the soldering done on this. So, I'm going to tin my soldering iron like so, pop it back in the stand, turn it off, and uh, let's get this finished. Trim the legs. One. Four. Check if not missed anything. There's no obvious shorts. Oh. What are those three pins there for then? Have I missed something? There are three holes, I've just noticed, in U4. Hmm. Let me just check the instructions. Huh, okay. Just check the uh, destructions and I can't find any rhyme or reason to put anything there. I'll ask Spencer about that. I'll send him a tweet. And uh, if I do find anything about these uh, free pins, I'll, here, I'll uh, let you know. Um, I mean, it can't be anything important because there's a socket soldered over it. Maybe it's something to do with when you're using this as a single clock module. I've configured this to run as a dual clock module by soldering everything on. I'll get back to you on that one anyway. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Okay, let's get some chippery in. Get the uh, box of chips. Um, there is an errata on the website with regards to version 2.0 of the board, um, which is worth reading. Uh, but this is version 2.1. I think you need to, there's an error on the board and you need to solder a link on the back and the markings for this chip are wrong. But the silk screen um, label on this chip, on this board, version 2.1 is correct. So we want a 74 HCT 204. Let me get, I can't, can't pick it up, find that. 74 HCT. HCT04, that's that one. Double check. No, I'll just pull the wrong one out and say. That one. Oh, come on, can't pick it up. 74 HCT04. So that goes in there. Notch at the top, just squash the pins in a bit. Perfect. Almost perfect. Bit chunky. 
really should get a forming tool for chip. There we go. Mm -hmm. Go four one in. What's the next one? We've got a uh, HCT double O. Be just a double O, surely. Oh, ah, yeah. That's the double O. And the legs. It's a lot easier to do it this on bigger chips. That's fine. Notch at the top. I presume all of these logic chips are used to. I'll look at the schematic later. Oh, divide the clock speed down. All these ranges here from 7 down to 0 0.3072. Divide. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you will go in. Stop fighting me. There we go. And then we've got, uh, was that a 393? Something. I'll be one of these. Seven four HCT three nine three. I've often wondered why the legs are slightly bent out on chips when they roll off the uh, production line. Why they don't just square them up through us all beasts. Then a 74 and an 02. I saw the 74 earlier. There's a 74. There must be a reason for it. Answers in the comments, please. Why do you think chip legs are not at 90 degrees to the chip body? I assume it's something to do with the manufacturing process and not a preference for large scale manufacturing. But I could be wrong. How do they do this in the, you know, automated production lines? They have machines that bend the legs. Hmm. Crazy fours. That leg's a bit bent too much. There we go. Try that again. Oh, you will go in. <laughs> Maybe need to bend the legs a bit more. So, what did he come to the channel for? Well, I really quite like the uh, seeing a 50 year old man struggling putting chips in sockets. Yeah, subscribe. Uh, one side's in, that's not good, is it? There we go. Try again. That's in. It's always worthwhile making sure the chips are correctly in, pos in position before you start pushing them in, otherwise the legs will get bent and tears will be shed. And an O2. 
That's an O2 there, isn't it? T O two E. Right, it doesn't really matter if you put them in the wrong sockets. You can always uh it won't work. And the chances of you doing any damage are pretty minimal. And you'll probably work it out by the time you got to the end of the of the build because it's like Lego. You'll uh, have an odd component. You think, where does this go? Oh, you know. Come on, don't embarrass me now. Here we go. There we go. Right. That is done. I'm really happy with that. So we've got two boards done now. We've got the Z80 board. And we've got the clock circuitry. Um, this is actually sufficient to do something. I mean, the Z80 will run garbage. We'll put these in the board. I suspect that something would happen. Um, yeah. Happy with that. Really tidy. Okay. If you like what I'm doing, then uh, please subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Um, I'll catch you for the next one, where I build the next RC2014 module. I'll see you soon.